Bap, bap, bap. Real quick, a little housekeeping. June 28th, I'm going to be in Erie, Pennsylvania at the Warner Theater. July 6th, 2024, I am going to be at the Mirage in Las Vegas. This is all new material, guys. July 17th, 2024, I'll be in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada at the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival with the Great Outdoors. See, Bert. <laughs> Kreischer. I'm a new special out. It is on OF.TV. This is OnlyFans streaming TV service where all the uncensored comedy is, where the cool kids are now. So just go to OF.TV slash Whitney. You'll see my special, Mouthy, and then the two roasts that we made for OnlyFans that are wild. I went for the crazy. I love it. I wanted to have fun. Um, I wanted to look more interesting. You look like a divorced pirate. <laughs> I just raided a pirate's closet. Yeah, you, you look like a pirate side chick. <laughs> pirate groupie who got like one ne- like got you got like one necklace. I'm like we fucked. He won't tell you we fucked, but we yeah, fucked. you're like wearing one of the like nets from the boat as in your walk of shame. <laughs> I'm a pirate only fans. <laughs> um, all right, let me get rid of like three of these. Hold on. These are, what mental illness is this? Do you know? <laughs> That's what I was. I said this is ADHD, but like beautiful. But like with OCD. Yeah, and like a lot of people have OCD or ADHD. I have both, so both. everything is like compulsively. Yes. But it's all like scattered. spread out beautifully. Is this water bottle an albatross? And is this yours? Or no. Is this, oh, this is like merch. Sorry. Or like what's it called? Um. Also, should we get rid of the baby bottle? Should you just drink it and not say anything throughout the podcast? <laughs> just like anyway. Like, I got it during it. How has motherhood changed me? That is gross. <laughs> oh, you drank it. Well, I think I got a little. <laughs> Looks like the <laughs> Oh my god. Holy shit. I think I'm really gonna throw up. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I don't know if it was the suckling of like it feeling like a micro penis was in my is mouth. It hot? <laughs> it's lukewarm. Like it tastes like Luke. Some guy named Luke from Tampa. <laughs> that was a very specific there was like a like a sweat in CK1 <laughs> undertone to that. Oh, I love how no one told you to do that. that no. <laughs> no one dared you. <laughs> like, you floated it, and I was like, I don't want her to think I'm not game for a bit. You go, I'm fucking fun. I don't want her to think that just because I have a kid now, I'm not down to clown. <laughs> oh, my God. I need female comics to know that, that I play that ball. That was funny last night, though, when you're like, we weren't, it was I mean, we don't have to hang. Are we rolling? I'll out myself. Yeah. Last night I did something downright shady. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, I, I love making new girlfriends, mm-hmm. but I don't have any room. <laughs> So or you have to kick or one out or you have, time. You have to sacrifice one. So I yeah yeah one's gotta go. <laughs> so you and Annie Letterman are gonna have oh, to. No! You're gonna have to fight in my backyard. Should we do a boxing match like a YouTube boxing? Yeah, for sure. Me and only, Annie. Fans, only fans. <laughs> only fans. Let's stay on brand here. Yes. I don't. Do you want to see those comments on YouTube? <laughs> no, I don't look at them. I'm not allowed to. Oh, I wouldn't. Wait, me and Annie, that would be so funny. You're not allowed funny. to look at YouTube I comments? don't look at comments ever. Who disallows you? My husband. He's very controlling. That's hot. No, could, but really? he's for my mental health. I wouldn't be here if I looked at comments. You're like, I don't look at YouTube comments. My husband yells at me not to, <laughs> and that helps my mental health. I go, would I rather have a fight with my husband or a fight with 100 imaginary trolls? What would happen if you looked at them? What if those- I look at them, then you could potentially get upset, and then he looks at me, and he's like, why are you upset? And then I have to be like, I looked at the comments and he goes, that's a you problem because we don't do that in this household. He's a comic, too. You guys have a house? An apartment. (laughs) House is a strong word. We don't do that in this apartment. We we don't do that in this apartment. In this one bedroom. It doesn't have the same authority, does it? Get out of my apartment. (laughs) Um, Okay, so good news is that he still asks you why you're upset. (laughs) This is great news. Good news, we talk to each other. But not to get too deep, I really realize that if you read the comments and then you start caring about it, then it affects your creativity. And once they affect your creativity, then they win. Okay. So you just want to post freely and sure. not care about the feedback. Sure. I'm an artiste. Yes. 
and you don't want to harm your craft. Exactly. We wouldn't want to compromise the muse. Of my dick jokes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. So here's what I'll say <laughs> about the comment thing. I, I just, are they that upsetting? No, I've I've actually been pretty good the last couple of years. Yeah. Are just, they only upsetting when you kind of agree with them? You know what it is? I did reality TV for a second, and that was a different level of fandom. Okay. Where they were like commenting on things that like weren't really how they happened, and okay. that's when I have trouble. On okay. Summer House, you actually were in a house then. I once <laughs> didn't last long. They were like, "Go back to your stupid little apartment." <laughs> so okay, you were on Summer House, and then you had fans from that. They're very involved, very involved in a good way or bad way. Both. Okay. So like, I've had points in reality TV where like people loved me. They were like, she's a relatable, hilarious queen. Agreed. And then reality TV where they're like, women are crazy and whatever. Sure. It's just like whatever the storyline is best for that season. But you become something people project onto in any, whenever you're a public figure or you're any, right. any, we're all projecting on everybody all the time. You're right. But like, here's the, what I will say about negative comments. As someone that has had a fraught past with them and mm -hmm. has lost weeks to like deep <laughs> suicidal depression after seeing one misspelled comment. <laughs> You know what no, I mean? I recommend. I highly recommend like, it. Like, why do you... It was like the Twitter egg. It wasn't even a real person. No. It was just like, you not funny. And I was like... <gasps> <gasps> oh, my God. I guess I have to be bulimic again. <laughs> like, that was me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I... were You're younger than me, but it's like... I we've There's always been some iteration of this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, when I was younger, like, we didn't, like, troll people on the internet. We didn't bully people. We didn't, like, damage them psychologically. We, like damage their property like we would oh. take shovels for a kid we didn't like in school and like drive past and like smash their mailbox illegal illegal <laughs> fully a crime a crime we committed crimes yeah. against people that we didn't like instead of just being like you suck like yes. i would have preferred but you're a real one we would egg people's homes <laughs> We would we would pants people like yes. we would pull their pants Just sexually assault off yeah in like public yeah we would destroy them for we made school shooters from scratch <laughs> do you know what I'm saying yeah they didn't plant it on some cloud yeah no 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 yeah. like we made sure someone's perception of themselves was destroyed forever yes you know and yes. now people are just like you suck and everyone's like oh, I can't <laughs> go on so you're saying real peace is like. Don't be that affected by the comments, period. If you accidentally see one, why are we making it such if a big deal? If anyone is mad at you, you've made it. If any stranger Ooh. is mad at you or doesn't like you, it just means you made it. I do think if no one is saying anything negative about you, none of people know who you are. Yeah, and I think for one negative comment, there's like 500 people. This is a real statistic. Uh, I'm a scientist <laughs> that were just like, love her, love her. Speaking of scientists, do you know that I attended your... New York screening of your movie. At the wing? I don't remember the details, but I was there because I worked for like a millennial like company and I walked up to you afterwards and I was like, thank you for being a female director. You're really important. And you were so nice. And I just remember thinking like, when he's a genius and now full circle, here we are. I love you for saying that. No, that movie was so sick and I just remember not even knowing that you direct and I was like, she can do everything. That's so nice of you. I made a movie about neuroscience. It was so good. Before people cared about neuroscience. Yeah, this, you were before your time. This was, I'm always, it's called being irrelevant before. <laughs> like, I'm like relevant People to didn't know women had brains when you yeah, did that. <laughs> I made a movie called The Female Brain, and everyone was like, uh... That's so, a so, fantasy. Is this a horror movie? Yeah, exactly. Sci-fi. Sci-fi. <laughs> I don't want to see aliens. This, I just want a rom-com, Whitney. Is this anime? <laughs> yeah, this is a fiction movie. Go, she's lost her fucking mind. No, it was such a good movie. People don't talk about it enough. Well, yeah, now it's like, there's no gender. I'm like, okay. Yeah. All yeah. right, yeah, the fact that I implied that, like, there's any kind of... I was saying of the word female. Toxic. Toxic. Well, why? <laughs> you know, like, the only problem with female to me is when a guy's like, let's go hang out with some females. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? When if you're... a guy says female on a podcast, everyone gets upset. It's contextual. Yeah, Because okay. you know he's about to say something about a body count. Right, which is one of the questions that someone sent in for you on my Instagram. <laughs> which is why you're here today. Which is what <laughs> they said, what's her body count? I love that question because, first of all, I'm not a fucking loser. <laughs> 
<laughs> Second of I all, put up numbers. I, I, like, I think research is important. Sure, sure. They I've wanted, been to senior frogs. Yeah, they wanted all women to be virgins so we couldn't compare dicks and compare lovers. I like and it. I'm not a fucking idiot. Yeah. So I'm going to put research in. I'm a scientist, and in order to understand all the STDs, I need to have them. You know, actually, I'm not out here being like, yeah, I love dick. I love dick. It's like, I'm actually someone who's had a lot of ups and downs in sexual experience. I'm not like crazy confident in sex. Yeah. That's not why I'm, I'm not showing off about how like tight my pussy is, sure. even though she is so fucking tight. Ha- it's, it's, about, <laughs> it's about showing that like I'm having human experiences on this earth with sex and yeah. we don't have to hide it. I have so much. I hold on. This is the quiet. I she's have you ever seen me? Yeah. I can't tell. Is this going I, badly? I need to. No, no. <laughs> She's like, can you leave? It's actually going too well, dare I say. Normally within like two minutes, I'm like, bitch, I got this. Let me just, I'll handle it. I just feel like sex overall, the way it's talked about, the way it's shown in the media is like the always the hottest scene. It's steamy. Yeah. She's like orgasming a hundred times. Yeah, yeah. His dick is so fucking hard. All yeah. time. He's not even like making eye contact and it's like perfectly going in. Yeah, yeah. Like when he has jeans on, he hasn't even unzipped his jeans and they're oh, fucking. I basically was like, I'd rather wait to like know a person and make sure I low-key trust them a little and yeah. then maybe I could come. Maybe I could come. There, I have to feel like a little bit safe. And that's why like when we're on our own, we're just like coming. I have to feel like I'm incredibly safe. And then once I feel safe, I have to pretend you're murdering me in cold blood. That, that's so layered. And that is the female brain. That's girlhood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like I have to feel super safe and then I have to pretend you're um, gashing me with a meat hook. It's so funny because I'm I'm not like that where like if he even accidentally scratches me with like his hand like crossing, I will be like, ow. Oh, no. Ow. <laughs> you're just over ow. on some princess in the pea <laughs> shit during sex. Like you're just like. <laughs> or he's like, you dear little slut. And I'm like, I'm like. College educated. Well, first of all, do you think I'm little? <laughs> thank you. First of all, thank you. <laughs> so I like don't care to be disrespected in bed. Interesting. I always say like, if I want to feel bad in bed, just like look me in the eye and say you're disappointed in me. You know, and then I'll want to make you come. See, I don't want to be disrespected at spin class. See, I want to be disrespected. See, I don't. I, I want don't... them to be like you, lazy piece of shit. Nope. And I'll be like, I'll be good. For I want to hear that in bed. Where did our lives take a turn? <laughs> <laughs> that I went in this direction because, well, as an I was a tennis player and growing up, like a it's very all good abuse. one. It's all like got it. But I mean, good. It's the abuse where it's like I'm going to be a champion because I'm working harder than the other person. Like we would do planks on hard courts in Florida, and like your skin's just peeling off, and you're like, I'm a champion. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like. It was just about like numbing your feelings and just sure. pushing through. Yeah, and that's where I think I get my work ethic from. But it wasn't enjoyable. But where did you get your work ethic from in tennis before that? Who didn't give you enough attention? Ooh, great like question. why? Did, I, I know that for me in sports, it was just like dad, daddy, daddy. If yes. I, you know what I mean? Daddy. Yeah, well, daddy, daddy. Daddy's my everything. Yep. Daddy. Daddy. Daddy's. I mean, my husband. Um, yeah, we'll talk about your husband. He, my husband. dad was like my number one supporter. Also, huge fan of you. Like, literally texted me and was like, I love Whitney. I watched her show. Is he single or? He, I mean, we'll see. You know, <laughs> eventually. He's, he, he, he loves like women's sports. He like watches the NCAA. Like, he's a coach. That's so, he's a, he I will love call this. me and be like, Caitlin Clark is killing it. Like, he just loves um, underdogs. He loves like people. Who... I love that. He loves you, Whitney. He loves like an underdog. <laughs> no. Who's like most people don't like. No, let's be honest. Who we can root for. Women in comedy are, are underdogs in the beginning. Now, Woof. you know, we're, we're in a mansion. But anyway, so my dad loves you. And I it's... wish my dad loved me the way he loved you. Mm-hmm. But he, it was very like when I'd win, he was, you know, my, he's so proud of me. And then when I lose, I'd be like, I want to do better for my dad. Is there a, th- like, do we want to like date our dad like I was like in love with my I don't know I'm so in love with my dad and my grandpa but what what, I was like I want you to think I'm pretty Mm. like that's on is that on me that's again that's where me and you differ you keep (laughs) taking it like a little too far and I can't I can't agree with you to that point but I'm kind of like I was my dad's son. Like I would yeah I started wearing makeup and my dad was very he was like why do you have red you look like a like a clown. Why do you Hewer? red stuff on your face? Okay. Like he, he, By the way, he knew what it was. He, 
the man he's gaslighting knew what was going you. On. He knew it was lipstick. I mean, why do you have red stuff nickel, on your face? <laughs> he'd come up to me and be like, "If anyone says you're not pretty naturally, they're fucking lying." But also, by the way, that's 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 the best line a guy can do. It's True. Like you, he's basically saying you're so much prettier without makeup on. He basically on. says you're perfect the way you are. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you, daddy. I can't what, wait for a man to say that about me, <laughs> <laughs> or I could just be with you forever. Um, no, I fully think. My dad is like, I also, he's hilarious. Yeah, and my charismatic. Dad. He's a sales guy. Yeah. Uh, I just, I uh, hit, I'm like a moth sold. to a fly. Yep. Yep. All I want is just to make machine. him laugh. Yep. And that's all I care about. And then when I'd win, he would, we would be like jumping in the parking lot, like rock. Yeah. He'd make me watch Rocky movies. Love it. And he'd be like, you can be a champion. Like, yeah, yeah. He created this insane dreamer who was like, you know, I can, I was always chasing something. Yeah. But I do think, I had a lot of pressure with tennis, but then with stand up, I have this detachment where now I have this maturity of like, I don't have a dad or a coach or a, any a, a boss who's like putting pressure on me. Yeah. So now I can talk to myself it's how I YouTube wish. It's the YouTube comments. I was talking. Now it's just the YouTube comments. <laughs> That's like, your boss? What did the boss say? <laughs> but there's. What did this Russian bot have <laughs> to say about me? Drago. I like. <laughs> so I've. A, I, I learned from that like intensity of being a tennis player. And it's still like a solo entrepreneurial type thing. And then I was like, I'm a silly creative person. And then I fell into stand up later in life. And now I'm it's like a safe space where like I'm not I'm tr I'm trying to keep my ego out of it more. Sure, sure, sure. Because tennis was very ego. Like you either winner or you're a fucking loser. Yeah. Where comedy I'm supposed to be like, I became a stronger comic from that difficult audience tonight. Yeah. That's true. Who are you mocking? No, I, no. I would have said I would. Is that, <laughs> That's I, what I say to myself. You, yeah, and I'm very just like it's you succeed by failing, and if you're not failing a lot, you're not trying out new stuff or being yes. creative. Yes, and I've actually had um, a club manager pull me aside once and be like, "Hey, I want you to like bomb more." Cause I I was I wanted to kill every time to prove that I was like worth it to be there, and he's like, "We like we love you, bomb a little, fuck around more on stage," and that was like such a cool thing to be able to have that permission. Yeah. He could have said it differently. Um, <laughs> he goes, he was flirting off stage. Yeah. That's like saying you look prettier without makeup. Like you can be not funny too. No, and I, I would so still many, accept you. I have so many issues. You're like too self-aware. Oh, like it must be Is that hard. true? Like you're very, you're just very, the female brain, you're very smart. And it's like a little <sighs> unnerving. <laughs> Like you just read me like a fucking book. <laughs> that is very nice of you to say. It wasn't a compliment. I'm <laughs> it wasn't a compliment. We're scared. <laughs> I don't. I, I. I've. I. Here's the thing about that is like, and that makes me go back to this one comment thing. It's like with like critics and like reviews. If you believe the good, you have to believe the bad. Also, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. that's the only thing. Whereas if you believe the bad, you, or if you don't believe the bad, you can't believe the good. Like that's why I just stay out of the comments. I'm trying to do this thing, and I don't know how it's spelled or the real definition, but stoicism. Sure. Because with tennis, I was very huge highs, lowest lows, and I think comics deal with that too. Where sure. they're like, "I'm the fucking greatest who ever did it," and then you have a bad set, and you're like. Why would anyone give me a microphone? So I'm trying to be very like, can you, okay, I, this is where we differ. I think stoicism is dumb. <gasps> and I'm going to say it to the I camera. Mean, I can't do it. I'm trying. Oh, I thought you meant like the whole thing where all these men now are like Marcus Aurelius and the Stoics. And they're all these like quotes that are um, not that profound, frankly. Yeah. Like barely a Panda Express fortune. Yeah. And it's like. <laughs> a Snapple bottle. <laughs> like bear has got me through more than these quotes. <laughs> it's like a strong man knows how to fish even when there's no water. And you're like, this, what? Huh? I no, no one can hurt you without your permission. Not true. That's some Yoda shit. Also not true. Yeah. Like it's just none of it. It's all so basic and silly. Yeah. It's like they would rather listen to men from 2000 years ago <laughs> than any woman now. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Everything that was said from ancient Greece, they didn't have phones. First of all, they were fucking children. So let's not take any advice. Their judgment was sick. They like, also were hooking up with children. What are we doing? The Roman Empire was crazy. Wild. They're just horny and like humping each other the whole time. All the blood's in their dick and they're writing scriptures. Yeah. Also, like, I'm good on like these profound quotes. <laughs> Pat, will you pull Chris Stefano and I argue about this constantly? <laughs> I'm not even Chris joking. Chris can't read. 
Correct. This is what, dude, stoicism quotes are for illiterate people because they are so <laughs> simple. They're just like, don't ask for a light load. Ask for a strong it's back. It's Dr. Seuss. It's like, <laughs> it's like magic school bus philosophy. Like, what the fuck are we doing? This um, is Frizzle for comics. Chris, meanwhile, I can't spell his name. <laughs> What's like shout here? out to New York City. Represent Brooklyn, Chris. New York. I love okay, Chris or no, stoicism. Oh fuck you. I mean that m- that photo was like a, the best it, revenge is to not be like your enemy. Hold on. Sorry. Hold on. Is that true? I mean Think is it tr- it sounds good. Sounds good. It sounds yes. Sounds it's like good. live laugh love. Like what the fuck does that mean? S- well, <laughs> You go women wrote Are that, you really so confused? Let's that. Are you really confused? Is that confusing? I mean, hold on. You go, those are two, three verbs. That is dumb, but I can defend it. Like, I know where they were going with that notion. Like, it's pretty simple. <laughs> like, but it's not solving my problems. No, I don't think that was the intention. No. You need to unfollow everyone you follow. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. Like, Again, like these, no. like, you could actually make so many mistakes following these because it's so general and life is so many variables. One hundred percent. If a man knows which port he sails, no wind is favorable. Oh wait, sorry, I got that wrong. I made it make more sense by accident. If a man knows not no. which port he sails, no wind is favorable. I have an apartment. I don't have a fucking boat. If a man knows not which port he sails, no wind. Is oh, it's favorable. Like pick a, de- pick a if you're goal. not decisive in where you're going, good fortune can't assist you, or you can't. You... But this is maybe it does make sense. But women, we just can't comprehend Too dumb. it because they're doing like they're communicating man words with each other. Why it's am like I being code. gaslit it's by dead pedophiles? <laughs> It's a code that's basically like he who fears death will never do anything worthy of a man who is alive. It means go golfing all day and lie to your wife. Okay, <laughs> don't fear death like hot. T- oh, you know what? I'll manually stop. Like as if that's such a choice. Life is very short and anxious. This is all the same guy. This guy did Seneca, not Seneca, shut Seneca, up. Seneca, Seneca, Seneca. This guy did not <laughs> shut them. How fuck obnoxious up. must he be with his friends? Like it's like he's on another fucking soapbox. How does it help to make troubles heavier by bemoaning them? This, Don't complain. It, this is just men complaining about what women do. You're exactly right. <laughs> I'm like, if you mean bemoaning them, you mean advocating for yourself. You mean living your truth and ex- communicating your boundaries. When someone rapes you, don't say anything. These are. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm being wild. Um, curb your desire. Don't set your heart on so many things, and you will get what you need. Have smaller goals. Hey, women, stop wanting to read. My attention span's so short, they lost me on the third word. I was like, scroll. Don't explain your philosophy. Embody it. Is this what stoicism is? Yes. Okay, I didn't know what stoicism was when I talked about it. You're, you're better off. You got dumber. We got dumber. We got dumb. re- I I'm feel actually dumber. I'm so confused about life right I'm now. I'm lost. I'm lost. I had I'm questioning my shit everything. together, and now I'm That's fully That's what they lost. wanted to happen I'm to us. questioning everything. They did it to us. <laughs> I meant, like, you don't have to, you don't try to chase all these crazy highs, and you live, like, life is about contentment. It's not about, like, getting these crazy happy moments, but, like, learning how to be content and not putting like too much pressure on like random. Th- is this moments. what your husband tells you is true? So you don't leave him. <laughs> That's what marriage is. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like mm. below. We average- got it. You're married. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Loud and clear. But anyway, yeah, I'm mentally ill. <laughs> Hold on, just really quick. I I I love the necklace you're wearing. What am I doing? But I'm just I what I happened? love it when you do a big swing on a piece of jewelry and then it's like you have to kind of babysit it. <laughs> no, I, wear I see this- you cut it like you're itching it. You're you have to I'm like fighting tur- for my life in this necklace right now. <laughs> and I wore it because I wanted Whitney to think I was cool. It was shiny. People like shiny things. I wanted to make myself look more interesting. And she can't stop staring at it. She hasn't listened to one word I said. I'm riveted. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat. She also said I looked like a pirate groupie. <laughs> a pirate side piece. <laughs> Who like gave you like the weird booty that was like. <laughs> Don't be jealous I fucked the captain you didn't. 
<laughs> no, but I just I know that we're due for one of these. Like a like, like a I can't breathe right now. <laughs> Should I put on your dog? Your dog would look such so cunty. She would look so no, cunty. No, don't take you can't bail That's on okay. it. I'm I'm committing. I to if the bit. I do a big swing on jewelry, I bail like 45 minutes in. I can't do earrings because like they really are pulling us down the patriarchy scale. Yeah. <laughs> so you know when you get cornered? by that aunt at a family gathering and you feel like you have to bend the truth a little bit because you have to lie to family it's like it's in the bible you know it's like because it's like that aunt who asks you like when are you getting married and what's going on with that promotion and why haven't you moved out of your mom and dad's basement shed thing or hi that's my baby in case you're curious only for her to not really listen and just judge you because you know what having a baby doesn't help people stop asking, when are you going to get married? It actually kind of amps it up. I'm shocked. <laughs> well, you may have to grin and bear it with your family. You shouldn't feel that way when talking to your doctor about that rash that weirdly looks like your high school crush or that bump. It could be a couple things, but probably is that keepsake token from that trip to Vegas or that black spot on your gums. Whatever it is, ZocDoc is here to save the day, the place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable and actually listen to you. And we're not talking about a few. We're talking about tens of thousands of doctors, all with verified patient reviews so you can make sure the vibes are vibing before you ever meet IRL. With ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a game changer. As you know, I recently 3D printed this child, and <laughs> he doesn't like that joke. <laughs> so I had a kid recently, and I've been going to doctor's appointments for him for the past 10 months, but for me, nope, of course not. So now I'm trying to catch up. Like I have this weird mole I have to deal with. I have like an itchy tooth. I got a, I, I go right on ZocDoc. Two seconds later, I feel like I have a doctor's appointment. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you find the doctor you want, you can book them immediately. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And these docs, they all have verified reviews from actual real patients. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated patient review doctors, credible doctors, and specialists. You can filter specifically for the ones who take your insurance located near you. Okay, da -da -da, it's the best. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is just between 24 and 72 hours. Okay, I said two seconds, but technically it's around 24 hours. That's it. That's it. You can even score same day appointments. See, no, I was right. Never mind. I'm always eventually right. I use this. You got to use it. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Whitney. Download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash Whitney. ZocDoc.com slash Whitney. Hi, buddy. So let's just, let's just cut the shit, Pat. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> let's talk about what everyone else is talking about. Okay. And I mean, everyone, <laughs> everyone is chattering about my skin. I, I don't, I, people keep telling me that my skin is amazing. And let's just get this out there right now. Okay. It's the elephant in the living room. As I say, my skin looks insanely good. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I literally, people are like, did you eat your placenta? No, I'm not that white. Okay. I started using a new skincare product. It's called GenuCell. Gen you sell natural, clean, free from mineral oil, parabens, chemicals formulated by a compounding pharmacist. Now, those people know what they're doing, not some like influencer. <laughs> There's like skincare that's like from some 12 year old influencer, like mm, hard pass <laughs> on a wrinkle cream made by a 12 year old. I'm good. This guy, he actually made it for uh, a woman in New Jersey. It's actually kind of an amazing story, and she loved it so much that she had him keep making it and keep making it, and then it became this big company. And you know you know a product works if a New Jersey woman says that it works, okay? These bitches don't lie. I'll tell you that right now. Of course, it's cruelty-free because, you know, getting older as a woman is cruel. Gen 90 is what I'm obsessed with. It's this new instant wrinkle cream from GenuCell. Instantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles anywhere you use it, around the eyes, the forehead, the crow's feet, laugh lines, and it starts working in literally seconds. Gen 90 is on sale now at GenuCell.com. It's, of course, included in the bestseller package. Order right now at GenuCell.com slash Whitney. Free shipping on all orders. GenuCell.com slash Whitney. I think people think, like comics who are talking about sex are promiscuous but Got i'm like it. no i'm more just like being very i'm not hiding anything yeah. i'm talking about all <laughs> aspects of sex good and bad because sometimes you think people who are bragging about not bragging but talking about their pussy a lot mm -hmm. means like i just understand sex i'm a sex goddess no but it's more like 
I want to be a mouthpiece to show like sometimes sex is great, but sometimes sex goes awry and we all can like figure it out together. So here's the thing that bothers me when people are like female comedians talk about sex. Okay. Do you want to hear us talk about politics? Is that you what know, you want? So funny. I wrote a bit because I was afraid people were going to be like, she just talks about sex. And I wrote it about abortion and guns. And I don't know if, if that's what they want either. No, 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 no. I, but I also think it's like, <laughs> yeah, definitely not. I, mean, I wrote a bit about I, war. I was, <laughs> I was like, war is crazy. <laughs> you guys, I literally war, war is wild. No, war, they get all the people and all the accessories at, to one place at one time, men. I can't get my five friends to show up at brunch on time. <laughs> How do they organize war? I'm fascinated by war and I want to do like 30 minutes They used on to it. do it before email. <laughs> They didn't even have a Slack to like, organize more. How did they even know where to get? Like, how did you even know what team you were and on? How come pigeons like communicated so well hundreds of years ago, and now pigeons pretend they're dumb in New York? But like, also, how come <laughs> I never see them dead? Why has a pigeon never died? I've never seen a dead pigeon in New York. They don't age either. They all have beautiful skin. Are they real? Are they like cameras? Um. Ah. Um, uh, are they can? Are they CIA cameras? They're stoic. <laughs> But like I war is gnarly. Like when you think about it, I mean it is you have to get so close to someone to kill them with a sword. Like you're in law. Like you are You're making out. You are to get you're physically Yes. It's kind like two men fighting is gay. Like killing a man with a sword, low key it is gay. It's so gay. It's gay. You're just like like you cared that much about him to kill him. <laughs> you're like if I can't have you no one can. <laughs> Like what is it? You took his life. Yeah, That's fucking gay. gay. Yeah. Like what did what what did he have You're on you? You're obsessed with him. Like what did you what did he have on you? <laughs> what did he know? You better not tell my wife about this. Also, like inserting gay. Well, everything like guns are gay. It's like a dick it's coming. Phallic. It's phallic. It's a dick coming. No, your war is gay. War is all just. Maybe if we start promoting propaganda that war is gay, like men will stop starting wars. I mean, I feel like they're fine. You know what I mean? You're fine with the level of wars. I feel like everything. You're like a little war is good just to keep the drama alive. <laughs> Seneca. <laughs> war is good for a little drama. I don't know. Like, honestly, like, I feel like humans have a certain amount of savagery that they require to function or something. Mm -hmm. And it's always like has to move. Right. It's like the Roman Colosseum. People mm -hmm. went to just like watch people get torn apart. Like there's a certain amount of bullshit that just has to go down. Yeah. This is why you, there was so much violence in your childhood when you were like throwing eggs at people and stuff. You were like, this is my war. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, just there ha there's we're savagery. It's like yeah. I just got worried about saying savages because I got in trouble for saying it. I don't even know why it's offensive. Oh, because Native Americans. Is it now saying savage? I was just told I'm not supposed to no. say walk in closet because it's against people that can't walk. Pointing <laughs> <laughs> out why it's offensive uh -huh. is the most offensive way to say it. But also, <laughs> do you think I say like my walk in closet? Like I say W I C obviously. I just say like my closet. Like no, this was you're solving a problem that doesn't if exist. If you say walk in closet, you should be canceled. It totally. So someone was just literally like just FYI, I just heard you can't say walk in closet. I'm like I've never said that in my life. Can you, you say fucking like, loser? Roll in closet? I just I don't How do you get in the closet? I don't know. I don't know, but I just was like, I can't, there's such a bigger, and then you can't say master bedroom. That's actually not from slavery. I did learn that. I, it's from the boats. It's from the boats. The mast. It was Seneca on his boat. Again, two <laughs> things I never say that now I know I super can't say them, and now I'm like my Tourette wants yeah, to say when them. When you're like, don't say it, don't say it. Okay, so war. I feel like we solved the war thing. But your point is, yeah, like if we're not talking about sex, like we talk. We're talking about our ex female experience. But I think it's this. But comedy, the whole point of comedy is you're saying something that's taboo. Yes. It's on you guys that women talking about sex is still taboo. But also, there's so many men who have the most amazing bits I love so much that are about sex. Like, even, like, Shane Gillis' last special, his sex bit got me. Like, yeah, it was yeah, so great. fucking funny. He's so funny. And I'm like, can we all just let each other talk about sex? Because it's so fun. Why not? But it's also because there's so much tension and so much embarrassment, and yeah. that's usually where, like, humor is. And also, like... And when a woman a woman does it, that's way more tension to be like, my labia. Yeah, and but you know what also is kind of wild? And maybe I'm a weirdo, mm -hmm. but women don't talk to each other, like gross about sex the way guys do, I feel like. Like, I don't yeah. sit around with my girlfriends and be like, you guys, I queefed. Like, yeah. I don't even talk to my girlfriends about it. I'll talk yeah. to complete strangers about it. Yeah. But I don't, like, sit around with my girlfriend and be like, 
so like the circum uncircumcised dick got caught in my throat or yeah. whatever. Yeah, we're we're it's too graphic. Yeah, yeah. But like on stage, we have that mouthpiece to be like, it's time to yeah. talk about some stuff. Your mouthpiece is a good name for a special for you. That is a good name. Also, I watched your um one of your most recent ones. You were on the floor for seventy five percent of the special. Yeah, that was iconic. I'm tired. And you your your knees and all that. Like you, I've never seen someone lie like. That was incredible. And then at one point you were just sitting talking. Uh, Is the, that allowed? On the ground. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> she, she like didn't want to get back up immediately and you were just like kneeling on the side. And I'm like, this is not stand up. This is sit up. I'm just, there's a point. <laughs> Because also, it's, I don't remember what the bit was, but yeah, I do remember being on the floor and being like, if I stood up and sat back down, I will lose all my power because there's nothing like there's a point, And I was like wearing heels. You would have to like, there's no funny way to be like, oh. Anyway, so like you lose You're your. Also, have you seen Drew Barrymore's show, her talk show? I She's have. always on the floor. Like yeah. they'll start the interview and the next, you know, she's just lying down kind of crying. Sure, 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 sure. And it was giving that because. You know what you're doing? Hmm. You're taking up space. Hmm. And that's important. You're calling me fat? That was, you took the, that. <laughs> yes, I yes. am. <laughs> <laughs> you were laying like fully on your stomach at one point, just humping. I was like on my phone. I looked up. I'm like, how did we get here? <laughs> Why are we on your phone? Because I was Googling your weight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Anyway. I want to go back. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting because it's also like comedy doesn't age well regardless. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like I was talking about squirting like eight years ago or something. And people are like, Whitney, all she does is talk about sex. And it's like, well, all you do is watch old specials. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was like at the time that was something. And that, that is like the token thing to say. Also, also, don't come. No, I know. Don't watch it. So I was. Has I, anyone ever. You know how hard it is to watch a female comedian perform. <laughs> you know how difficult it is to see a female comedian do a, a stand-up show? Like, are we, are people, are female comics just running up to you on the street and being like, <laughs> my buzz ain't. Like there's, you don't, you can go your whole life never seeing a female comedian. We're basically invisible. Like we're, at like the House of Blues that's under construction. <laughs> like they like we do shows on like Tuesdays. Like you never have to see us. When people like all female comics they do. They turn talk our about mic sex. off when we go on Dude, stage. <laughs> I'm like, did this just break the second I took Dude, the mic? Dude, I've never gotten in the algorithm. <laughs> Not one time. So like uh, people talk about like, oh, what female comics do is talk about sex. Like when is the last time you they were- They saw an ad for like a Nikki Glaser special. It's on ad. But it, it starts <laughs> muted. You pressed on mute. Like you, how did we get here? I'm actually not even that dirty, my set. Like people, I think they assume it's going to be a type of way. Yeah. And it's like, I'm just coming up with whoever thoughts I think will make people giggle. Sure, Like sure. it's not that serious. What can I make people it's laugh stand about? stand-up comedy. I hate when people take it too seriously. I'm like, I'll, I was like killing with my little niece who's two years old. And sure, I was sure, like, sure. this, that's comedy. Like that's I was, right. the other people were not doing it. I was like nailing the timing i sure, was doing sure, the sure. like oh, like and she was loving it and yeah, in that yeah. moment i was like and that's why i'm a professional comedian yeah yeah like it's an energy sure <laughs> but it's also like no one's like i think the three stooges are hacks <laughs> <laughs> they're just like beer, beer. like what we're fine with like sound effects we're fine with like <gasps> you know i actually, mean i've been i had these like kevin james like i can fall off a treadmill too <laughs> I have these, uh, I'd call them hand on the street, but I do these street interviews Sure. and they started doing well. And someone was like, that's so hacky man on the street. I'm like, I didn't invent man on the street, but like our podcast hacky, everyone has a podcast. But also who, hold on, who said that? Well, I'm a comedian. Who was it? Was it Norman Lear? <laughs> was it Chris Rock? Like, who was it? No. Do you ever like walk into H&R Block and there's like four cubicles and you're like, <laughs> he's doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? You go oh into like God. a Claire's and you're like, there's a Claire's in Minnesota and the girl <laughs> sells the same earring. Like what? Go up to an account and be like, you fucking hack. You're using the same fucking W9 as everyone else. You guys, this is a, oh, you're using a microphone? Let me pretend you know what a W9 is. do that. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what? What do you mean? But you know what's interesting? I'm coming up with the algorithm, which means I've somehow cultivated this like 
like my show can be like 90% women mm -hmm. and their boyfriends who are like learning like, oh, this is fun. I actually like or like I have on. to do this yeah. or like I'll, I make fun of the guys. So they'll bring their boyfriends and the guys like attention. But it's like I've I've been very kind of protected in my up and up where like. I performed for mostly women a lot in my career. Like you walk in and it's like a girl's locker room and That's we're all just sick. like swinging our panties around, sure. throwing tampons. <laughs> it's crazy. That's sick. But like you had to do that for me to even like have the opportunity to get there. Huh. I had to do what? You had to do comedy. Like you had to be there for me to even think I could be there and then tell girls like, yeah, comedy's a thing. It's a thing. I mean, thanks. Take the credit. Okay. Just take it. <laughs> I don't know how this works. She said something else downstairs. She's like, you had to do this so I could do this. And I was just like, did I help you by accident? <laughs> no, you did. That was not the goal. No, but it could even, you could be even as annoying. Did I just make it look so easy? You're like, I could do that. Definitely. When I watched The Female Brain, I said, if, if I can create what I want to create like she is, I think I could. You're like, she made something no one wanted to see. How could I, I could just. <laughs> I go, they paid me to go to this premiere. Yeah, I, could... <laughs> I didn't want to be here and it turned out. Probably... No, everyone watch The Female Brain. Stream it if it's still available. I, I love you. Seriously. I think it's on Hulu, I think. Yeah, it's really know. Oh, it's good. on. You know what, it is on Malaysia Airlines. <laughs> They, that's so disrespectful. <laughs> Over wherever they it believe was, in gender, it, it was plays on there. Malaysia Airlines and on the plane that went awry. <laughs> is, that, is that the same? Did I get it wrong? It was a different airline. Because <laughs> the pilot was watching it and they go, "Fuck this shit! I'm turning <laughs> straight into the ocean." Female director. Fuck this. <laughs> no, but it's it's the same thing with sports. You have to see women who you like. To be like, wait, I think I might want to do that. Right, right, right. Like, her personal life seems to be going so well. Yeah. I like staring at you. This is my necklace. I like that we can be silent together already. <laughs> wait, should we just see how long? What? We could be silent. You go, I think we need a, I think we need a break. I don't want to. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I would normally win that, but you played sports seriously, so I feel like you're super competitive. I am really competitive. Me too. But I've been very. Um, it's caused a lot of pain. Competition, sure. In terms of like losing and being like, if you lose, you suck. You're horrible. And that's why with stand up, I've tried to be like, this is a creative avenue. You don't have to be cutthroat. You don't have to be hard on yourself like that. You don't have to root against other people. Sure. And be more, because with tennis, it was very like, I have to beat that bitch. Yeah. And I actually didn't like who I was. Yeah. I didn't like going on the court and like, I, you had to fucking, it was like boxing. I had to like beat her down emotionally and physically. Sure, sure. So then I was like, You're I actually describing just make the people, comedy store green. But room. I really want to just not do that. Yeah. So it's like, it's a choice. Sure. It's, it's a mentality and it's because I was in so much intense pain from that comp competition. It's easier for me to be like, you guys can compete about this, but like this isn't competition for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've lost to Duke in a tie break and then cried for four days. Like, I'm not going to get upset over this. No. So it's it is definitely like just change shifting perspectives sure, to survive sure. in the green room. Yeah, everyone's store. like playing their own game. Has everyone been nice to you? It's funny you ask me that. I people. When I started comedy kind of wrong, sure. the first time I did comedy, I did a podcast show and my friend dared me. A podcast show? Like a live podcast because I had a podcast. Oh, got it, got it. And my friend was like, I was writing all these tweets and I was writing sketches. Uh -huh. I'd never wanted to be a stand-up comedian. It was not a goal. Smart. And my friend was like, do 10 minutes of comedy, of stand-up comedy. And like put all your tweets together. On some are podcast? premises, some are punchli punchlines for this live show. So I just go. This person wasn't your friend. No, and she didn't know anything <laughs> about stand up. <laughs> this person hated you. Yes, this person, this person had a shrine of you. And humiliate was, you. <laughs> she did, had a voodoo doll. Did she buy you this necklace? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This, by the way, I love your necklace. Also, this necklace was made by a female designer. Okay. Who's small. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Men make ones that other people want to like look at. <laughs> I'm joking. So I so I basically was like, fuck it. I'm gonna do ten minutes of stand up comedy in front of a sold out Carolines of three hundred people. That's not allowed, but when you are when you're dumb, 
and you don't know the rules, it doesn't seem like a crazy thing to try. I didn't know you should start with like two minutes. I love that you're saying this because it is just to like time out to just be like an inspirational icon for a second. <laughs> um, I love that like because stand up, it's kind of like the less you know, the better you're going to yes. be. I like it. Like, you know, when people are like, I can't, I've never learned. I don't know how to write it. It's like the less you know how to do it almost the better it's going to be. I also have a problem, which is why I've been fired from multiple jobs. I like hate being controlled. I hate rules. If you tell me rules and it is a little creative brain where like if they're like, this is how you do the assignment, I'll always have to do it differently and then complain if they were like, you didn't do it right. And I'm like, right. oh, but was it good? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's why I think stand up I love because there's no fucking rules. But stand up, if you do it like anyone else, that's when you get dinged. You like can, that's the worst thing you can do. If you sit down and someone goes this is how you have to do it. Yeah. I think I'd still be working on 10 minutes right now. That's also not even true. You don't have to start with two minutes. You We're don't not have, lawyers. It There's no like you have to get this degree. In the beginning, all you have to do is get comfortable on stage. So I, tennis, I had a lot of performance anxiety because it was a really intense thing, but I was good at it, but I was miserable. So, but I was missing that high of performing. So I was like, I'm going to do it. And I remember before I walked on stage, Little did I know it was crazy what I was about to do. I was like, oh no, what if my tennis brain, female brain takes over <laughs> and I freeze and I feel like out of body and I get anxiety. And I got on stage and I started doing my little bits, <laughs> my little tweets. <laughs> and I felt like I was talking to my friends at brunch. Great. And I felt this calmness come over me. And then at the end of the set, I had some comedy friends that I knew. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't completely out of the scene. And they were like, the best part of that show was your stand up in the beginning. And you have potential. If you want this to work, like you got to get stage time in New York City. Yeah. And that was the guidance I listened to. They just were like, you have to get on stage. One guy was like, never say no to a show. And I did that for a little too long. Um, but I was, I was had that like coach mentality where I'm like, just get on stage. Yeah. And it. then I wanted to sell tickets. So I had like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say 33 minutes and a Q and a, and I just went on the road and then very early on had an hour because I wanted to make money Yeah. and cause I wasn't making money. And then next thing you know, I've had an hour that I've been cutting and adding and cutting and adding, but it was a very non-traditional route. But a lot of the comics I think respected the grind of like how long I've, how early I got an hour and how long I've been doing it. Yeah. And I think, they appreciate it because they know how hard I work and I'm yeah, fine yeah. if if they're just like she's just really hard working yeah but, um, I get that a lot it's I mean look we're gonna find insults in com every compliment <laughs> hurts every compliment hurts my feelings yeah. because it's like you get on stage someone's like you're such a good writer and you're like mm, yeah performer no, we're not. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'll find a way to be in. So when someone's like, you work really hard. I'm like, yeah, I'm not effortlessly funny. You know, whatever. Yeah. So, oh, you're, oh, you're so ambitious. I'm like, what the fuck is that supposed to but mean? Honestly, coming from like the tennis community where we all were scared of our dads and just like scared of each other. And then the reality TV community that I was briefly in, which is like the scariest thing I've ever done. Comics were such a breath of fresh air to me because mm. I was like, yeah, I'm having trouble with this reality TV show. And they made me laugh so hard about like the reality of the situation. Yeah, being yeah. Like, you, he said that to you and you said that. Yeah. And they were making fun of me. And I just remember thinking like, oh, my God, I've been in this stupid world that takes itself so seriously. And I actually don't even fit in with these people and they don't like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, comics was like the first time I really was like, oh, these are my freaks. These are my yeah. people. So I actually love the community. But then I've been on the road so much that I... I'm not around enough to get in the drama. Like I like to hear the drama, but mm -hmm. I'm not, I've been on the road the last like two years. Yeah. yeah. So sick. I kind of like, I just like love all the comics. I, the stand has really been great to yeah, me I love in New it. York. And I love that. And club. I love kind of putting them on too. Cause I have a following and I love doing the hand of the street videos with the comics. Like I really like building this like community around myself because I had a pretty lonely intense childhood of competition so i'm like can we all just be friends yeah totally totally does yeah. everyone does it have to be so like cutthroat like comics are kind of like it's inter it's like kind of just family in a way where yeah. shit can go sideways and people get jealous and yeah you're i definitely had the complaints of i would perform and all these girls would start to show up and some of the guys didn't love that like the room would be like half girls. Like it wasn't like all girls. Oh, I'm sure the so they male were, like, comics pissed. were, <laughs> they were pissed. pissed. They were pissed. At all the 
hot young girls you drew well, to be the like, club. This crowd just like is, doesn't like the crowd's Hannah's crowd, and, and I was they like, like <laughs> don't want to have sex with me, and the and roofies like, aren't hitting tonight. <laughs> You know the roofies go bad? I was like, honestly, my crowd will laugh as long as you don't make a bad rape joke. Well, yeah, that's why they were mad. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking about, by the way. Um. <laughs> but, so, but I also, for girls, going to comedy clubs is not like a thing they do. I think it's a good date night. It's actually true. That's it's actually a date very night or true. Go. But yeah, girls are not just like, what should we do tonight? Let's go to a comedy club because it no. doesn't always feel like a safe space. So I like loved the stand is like cool. It has like all these fancy drinks and I'd be like espresso martini night. Yeah. And they'd make like all these espresso martinis and yeah, all the yeah, girls yeah. would come. But that is also kind of like, I, I don't know as someone that doesn't go to see comedy because I do it for a living. I'd yeah. be so curious if I had like, it wasn't in my radar at all or didn't do it. It's like, let's go to a comedy club tonight and listen to a bunch of guys talk about how dumb we are. <laughs> I mean, it you, is you also. You kind of nailed it. You know what I mean? You na- well, it is kind of like, you know how Hollywood, it was always like, complaining about the annoying wife and that's just how every show was and then that's how comics used to be like i got married and she's Mm -hmm. fucking on my tail all the time and also i don't blame guys that for the first like 10 years i was doing stand-ups like why am i gonna go watch whitney like make fun of men i mean i make fun of women i make fun of everybody but it's like i feel like i had a reputation for and i totally get it but i also every now and then you see a male comic that you're like his perspective is really interesting and fun to me yeah yeah and that's where i think guys can enjoy our comedy i always say that Guys feel like they're in the female locker room being like, I didn't know a woman felt like that when yeah. you're cuddling her. Or like, I didn't know that she thought of that. Yeah. So it is pretty, it's educational. Um, oh, it's but like, I do like having a safe space for the girls to feel like they can come to a comedy club and not feel like they're not meant to be there. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. I love everything you're saying except safe space. We need a new term. Um <laughs> Safe space. I said it. And you have I to felt say it with a lisp. Safe space. <laughs> I spill. I feel like this is not a safe space for me right now. I was told by an intern <laughs> at a TV show that it was not a safe space because I said "Merry Christmas," so I'm triggered by the word "safe space." <laughs> um, okay, you've been touring for two years. Does this take a toll on your marriage? Good question. Um, I feel like it keeps it fresh. Is it? It's a fine question. It wasn't I, that good. Uh, no, I keep, I keeps it fresh and like we kind of like taking breaks from each other. I feel like if you have a nine to five, you have to battle that like, do we become roommates? Yeah. Where this is very like, he's a comic, he gets it. And we're, we love to talk on the phone. Like we don't shut up. So it's like a I constant phone call. And then we are both pretty independent on our own. Like he's been single. He's, he's never been married before. Before. And... <laughs> Was that a red flag? I, I a red flag is so zeitgeist, you know. But I think because he was like a, a comp, he's a comic in Ireland who was pretty big. Like I understood like, yeah, he toured his whole life. Like I kind of get how a guy could not be married. Yeah. And he jokes that he's like a sweater where you're like, oh, this looks really nice. And you put it on. You're like, OK, not perfect. But yeah. Yeah. I get it. A little chunky. Yeah, a little chunky. But I it's know. like he feels like home to me. He's I my, he's my love dad. that. He's a, he's a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. We both do comedy. He's he's how much older? He's fourteen years older than me. But uh-huh. I'm also I'm thirty two. I don't recommend like early twenties. Like I make my own money. I don't need him. He doesn't need me. It's very like okay, cool. I like you as my like my partner. He gives me great advice. Yeah. And we really don't. Our identities are not each other at all. Like you're interdependent, not codependent. Yeah, and I think I've. It took me a while to be ready to even be in that kind of relationship. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he does remind me of like a lot of my family members. And I feel like you end up being with someone that feels familiar to you. I love older. It's toxic. Oh. Why is it like I'm toxically attracted to older men? It's like it's so hot to me. I'm not dating an older man right now. Um, like I love like old tattoos. <laughs> I'm dead. To, like, Wait, you want to fuck a pirate, and that's why I'm you're jealous. Ta- I, yeah, it's, <laughs> you got me. Always projection. Wait, an old tattoo. I love like old tattoos that like have been there for a long time, and like like there's like a mole with a hair coming out of it on like a. Po- it's probably skin cancer, but he doesn't care. Don't care. <laughs> but it's like on a portrait of his daughter. You know, I love like an old like girlfriend, a, a secret family <laughs> totally, that he forgot yeah, about, or sure, one of the many <laughs> that he forgot about. Like I love an old like girlfriend's name from like the late '70s. I love like a <laughs> like Donna. Like what? He has so many lives before you. <laughs> yeah. I always on our wedding day we gave speeches because he lived in Ireland most of his life, and I guess it's an Irish thing to give a speech. And I, I kind of was like, oh, I. 
I sometimes I'm sad I never saw him grow up or like was there for when he was like younger, like in his 20s when he was like becoming who he is. But then I remember I'd be in kindergarten if yes. we met at that time. <laughs> but I, I like to use like uh, dogs to compare it. It's like younger guys are like puppy dogs that you can adopt who are like super excited. They always have a little red boner. They're peeing everywhere. <laughs> you can't control them, but they're so cute. But you're also like, you're fucking annoying a little. Yeah, yeah. And then older dogs like... They're smoking a cigarette. Play they, poker. They've been pre-trained. They're not jumping on your couch, you know. They, you don't have to teach him about, like, anything. He knows where to use the bathroom. He knows where your clit is. Like, you, And I'm not a caretaker. I'm not going from your mom to me. I'm not taking care of shit. I don't even do laundry. And he's been self-sufficient to this time. So yeah. I'm like, good. Now we're just, like, now we have an apartment. Love. That we don't spend a lot of time in. Love. And so what do you, I've always struggled with dating older guys. Like, what do you get them as a gift? Like they have, oh so they have everything they need. I'm actually so bad at like a colonoscopy. <laughs> Advil. Yeah. A lot of Advil. <laughs> like, he actually loves unscented moisturizer. He goes nuts. A Cetaphil in <laughs> your <laughs> Chris stocking? <laughs> Get he's like, don't get me scented because he's Irish and sometimes does he skin use is... like the chapstick that's like black the medicated Why does every dad have that always chapstick? and they it, always lose it but it always doesn't have the wrap on it it's just white and then you open it and it's that pink and you're like oh man it just smells like medicine the, it's like Vicks vapor rub you're just like what is this fuck out of here you gotta kiss them and you're like I wish you smoked cigarettes yeah actually. It's, uh. <laughs> it smells like medicine so Let's get to it, guys. Let's talk about Gooder. Gooder makes $25 active sunglasses. I love these sunglasses because they don't slip, which means I guess they're active. They don't bounce. They're 100% polarized. Gooder, where have you been all my life? I love having lots of sunglasses. I need, I, I truly need a pair for the car, my purse, my the garage, my living room, every pocket of every jacket. So I don't have to be that dork who wears them around my neck. Do you know what I mean? And everyone's like, hey, Auntie Coachella, I don't need that. Do you have any cough drops? Hey, hey, I don't need you mocking me, okay? Just because I have one pair of sunglasses that's overpriced. I need sunglasses everywhere because you know that your girl doesn't want eye wrinkles from squinting because crow's feet is for the birds, I tell you. But why are sunglasses $400? In what world is someone spending that kind of money on sunglasses? Like why? Yeah. Gooder solves all my problems because I have to wear sunnies at all times because I cannot tolerate eye contact with another human. I did it once and now I have a giant <laughs> These glasses are ridiculously cute. They're also lightweight, comfortable, 100% polarized. If you're active, if you're running, they don't slip or bounce like jerks. Easy to clean, unlike some jerk brands we know. Why Gooder? The name of the glasses are also really cute. I got the one, they're called Donkey Goggles. They're orange and blue and uh, super cute. And then there's one called Fast as Shell. Fast to shell, which is like tortoise and blue lenses. They are so cute. Jeans, white tank top, colorful, gooder sunnies, fashion icon instantly. They're so cute. You don't even have to have a personality. <laughs> They'll do all the work for you. So if you want to support the show and pick up a pair, Gooder is giving good for you listeners free shipping on your first order. You can go to Gooder, G-O-O-D-R dot com slash Whitney. Use the code Whitney to get free shipping. Yes, that's a baby. Gooder offers a 30-day money-back guarantee and 100% satisfaction. Find your pair at Gooder, G-O-O-D-R dot com slash Whitney and use promo code Whitney to get free shipping. Oh, hello. Good for you listeners. I love you. Um, also, I somehow won the lottery and I get to talk about the one thing that actually matters to me. Yes, there's a baby right here. You do too, baby. I swear. But like, let's be honest. Etsy. Etsy is, I think it's my religion. What, is that what you would call it? I'm just saying. If you need gifts, Etsy is your guide. There's a new thing called gift mode on Etsy. It's here to take the stress out of gifting so you can find the perfect item for anyone and any occasion. Now it's easy to find gifts made by independent sellers for all the people in your life like the pickleball or the jazz guy, the zen seeker, yoga person, the artist or the like pasta lover. You know someone who makes like, like bread their life? They're like, I'm sourdough lady now. And you're like, all right. Whatever you need, Etsy's got you. Wall decor, drink and barware, serveware, cookware, rice platters, cutting boards, throw blankets, candles, linens, outdoor grill, accessories, necklaces, bracelets, rings, 
earrings, pajamas, robes, handbags, wallets, jackets, coats, sweaters, knits, slippers, clutches, uh, overnight and duffel bags. I actually just bought a diaper bag on there. And then these little clear bags to go within the diaper bags. You, you can't use plastic grocery bags for diaper bags. Learn that the hard way. For some reason, in January, all my friends have birthdays. So I'm just like gifting my head off at the moment. The gifting moment is always around the corner, sneaks up on you, especially after Christmas when you think you're out of the woods. You're never out of the woods. But whether it's birthday, anniversary, holiday, or even just a day to say thank you, gift mode on Etsy has got you covered, okay? Do you need to find the perfect gift? Don't panic. Try gift mode now. Buy on Etsy.com. See, he's panicking. I said, don't panic. And he was like, what? Panic? I know. We got so many of your baby clothes on Etsy, didn't we? <laughs> oh. So he loves skiing, which is Shock. the yeah, hardest part about our relationship. I. So here's the thing about skiing, I surfing. retired. I quit it. I quit Good. it. Good. I have boundaries. Good. I just, it's two hours. Uh, to get the shit on, to get in the thing, to go up the thing. Forget it's like $1,800 for all the dumb, the costume. They're like, how do the shoes feel? And you're like, they're killing me. And they go, perfect. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> you're going to have a great time out in the freezing ice cold. Also for me, you can't win at it. So I don't no. fucking get what we're doing. Mm -mm. You're fighting for your life down a mountain. And then they're like, cool, do it again. But also two hours, get up the thing for what? Two minutes of wee, And then... Then what? I broke, that was it. I chucked myself down a mountain because I was done with it, and I like basically broke my hand because <laughs> I was like, I'm done. Why do we all have to like s like spend all this money, watch all these documentary, have all these like sports events so men can go wee <laughs> for two minutes You're just surfing, like dude? I had, I watched that the hundred foot wave. I just couldn't stop watching. Bethany I'm like, Hamilton lost an arm because of. Some men who were bored mm -hmm. and wanted to feel like kings or queens mm -hmm. and gods. Also, get out of the ocean. That's someone else's house. True. Okay. That's a, a shark safe space. Yeah. That you're invading. Correct. That's where they pee. All the, it's also the, okay. So the beach, <laughs> <laughs> the beach is, okay. I don't do the beach either. Actually, neither do I. I don't understand why people don't realize that sand is blonde dirt. It's not, people like think sand is like. Beautiful. Beautiful, it's dirt. It's dirtier than dirt. People pee in it, they stand it, they put their feet in it, they're like naked on it. You're so right. Do you know what I'm saying? And then and it's like in every crevice. It's dirt, right? And then you go in the ocean, which is like someone else's ha is urine. It mm -hmm. is urine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. People, okay, so I watched this documentary of 100 Foot Wave. It's like four episodes on HBO. I watched it. Of this guy. Who's just like, how am I gonna? Stop? And I was like, and we gotta. And Talk he about running from your real problems. He's getting like new joints put in. <laughs> like his, he may pass away. Like it. I'm like, why? He does, died four times in the documentary. Why? And his this, wife was like, can you just come home and like take the kids to school? His once? children are just. They have dreadlocks. <laughs> They're like, can we go to the barber? Like, <laughs> they're just like starving. It's crazy and, what people do to feel something. We. Yeah. We for how long? Yeah. I wake up with so much anxiety. Like I don't need to go on a roller coaster. I don't need to have any like near life death experiences. Like sure. I feel like I'm gonna die all the time just like existing really? in my own head. No, well, I'm just like there's enough stress. Yeah, yeah. Why would you add to it with a thrill of like actual death? Sure, sure, sure. I don't I don't need those I also like don't do any drugs. <laughs> oh, that's me either anymore. Like I I can't I joke like I took a melatonin once and I'm like this is my ayahuasca. Like it was crazy. <laughs> it was 48 hours I like didn't know my mom was like do you need to go to rehab? <laughs> that's so so have you ever done I I I've, haven't done cocaine, heroin obviously. Mm -hmm. I've never done meth. What else is there? I've I smoked weed and I will like ruin parties. Like I'll cry. I get really in my head. And then I did cocaine once in my bachelorette party. And I did one. What a wild time to do cocaine. No, I don't know what was happening, but I, is it a hit? I don't even know what it is. I did a, a bump. I did a bumpy and immediately started just gushing blood from my nose. <laughs> and my, <laughs> I was that like, was I'm an angel. Fentanyl for sure. <laughs> You just had a stigmata like I am. The people around me were like, mm, maybe let's not. Maybe that's a sign. Let's not. So I 
I'm trying to like, I did like <laughs> <laughs> it was so nice. You know, the, I thought I was gonna be like Johnny Depp was gonna come out somewhere and make out with me, and instead everyone was like, "That's yeah. disgusting." <laughs> it's all over my white dress. <laughs> it was so, so bad, but like I just, I also just feel like I have enough time controlling my own mind. Why fuck it up more? And I think it's a control thing too. Yeah, yeah. I'm very about like I was in sports. You're not allowed to do right, drugs. Do drugs. Right, you're right, getting right, drug yeah, tested yeah. all the time. But I do think. But I think most people probably do drugs to get the kind of like focus, clarity, energy mm. pr- that you already have playing sports or to be as funny as you are. You know what I mean? People Tennis be- was my drug and right. stand up is my drug. Got so it. it's it's definitely stand up's my therapy. Don't ever say that again. When people- <laughs> Sorry, it's my safe space. It's my safe I'm place. sorry. I, I just like, feel like so safe. The only time I feel safe is when I'm harassing boyfriends doing crowd work and telling them that their mustache is stupid. <laughs> Here, here's what I will say. Smoking weed, I had to stop because it I... It makes your anxiety worse. Had a manic episode. <laughs> long story okay, short. Long story short. I it had was a, a year. I had a psychotic <laughs> break. You guys all saw it. Um, I, Wait, was that the, the dyed hair time? No, that was... You guys was sober. That was me. <laughs> That was just a choice I made uh, sober. But you like could pull off a lot of shades and I got a little jealous. I thank you. Your skin tone can pull off more shades. Not all of them. That's really. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't do it again. It got real carrot but top I, I real fast. I was like, oh, she. OK. <laughs> no, she did it. I can't even. This is all I can do. I look back at the time that I had colored hair. It was during a pandemic. Yes. And I did People have friends that were, were hair artists that were losing their health insurance. And it was like. I could have just like given them a thousand bucks. You I ruined would, all their careers. I, <laughs> <laughs> They're like, can you stop posting? They're like, I can never work in this industry again, Whitney. <laughs> they, they think whatever hair dye I put on you poisoned your brain. They're like, uh, you did Whitney's hair and then she, <laughs> she started stuttering. But they for sure were sometimes you were like, turn it this color and they were like, we don't recommend you do that. And you like push them. Yeah, I yeah. was. Uh, yeah. I mean, gr- yeah. no one does green. It wasn't recommended. Yeah, 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 yeah. no one does green. Um, and I was like, but if you mix this and this and they're like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that for you. And I was like, but here we yeah. are. Um, how about so you- ombre gray? <laughs> they're like, you shouldn't. And so, what am I saying? Your psychotic oh, break. But I also like didn't realize how mainstream people perceived me as. That doesn't sound. Per- I didn't say it perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like Madison Sinclair, awesome comic, said to me, "I was like, why does everyone think I was like losing my mind when I dyed my hair blue? Like, why is that so wild?" And she was like, "It would be as if Jay Leno dyed his hair blue." Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm trying to like put myself in the shoes. Like, if she's I, if- just like, you're a professional. Like, if Sarah Silverman all of a sudden had pink hair, I'd be like, yeah. Huh. Yeah. She okay? Yeah. You do look put together in general. So I guess, like, it was like, Uh, is she she going through something? Sure, sure, sure. Because, like, right now, you could, I feel like you could be president. Like with your glasses and like your hair back, it's very. So you're put saying together. that I can't put a sentence together, and I'm really, <laughs> really old, and probably had a facelift, and that, can't walk up a flight of stairs. That was the meanest thing I've ever said to it anyone. Was that was so fucked that up. That was. Uh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> I'm. I'm do you want me like, to, no, you don't. What you did don't. you just call me unqualified? <laughs> <laughs> the gum on the bottom of my foot could be present yeah, right exactly. now. <laughs> I mean, literally, dude. You, just, you look like a CEO. You okay. can be a CEO. Okay. Thank you. Not one that does like illegal stuff. Or, or maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. A, like one that just gets hired to like be the performative, like the they like hired a woman just yeah. who's not totally qualified just yeah. to seem progressive. <laughs> Right, you're the barstool CEO. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Like, because what is it called when they a company is already tanking? They usually bring a woman in to be the CEO. Oh, to just be like she yes, ran it to the ground. Yes, totally, we totally. tried. We did everything. It's like it's like a real thing. Uh, like, isn't the Twitter CEO it's X, uh, a woman CEO now? Oh God, I think so. I know that poor woman. I know, just Can you fighting, imagine? just fighting. So hold on, back up. Back up. Okay, Your drugs. Psychic break. Here, yeah, psychotic. Yes. Yeah, don't, like, oh, don't, don't conflate those. She goes, I started reading people's minds. <laughs> yeah, no, one is cool, one is sad. Okay. You go, um, my yeah. grandma's speaking to me right yeah, now. Yeah, one's cool, the <laughs> other one involved me trying to track down the Scientology ships. Um, so, let's, which honestly, I'm interested by in. By the way, it came about. pretty close to finding Shelly <laughs> Miscavige. I mean, me during my psychotic episode, like, I did get a lot done. 
It was like big Matthew McConaughey in season one of True Detective. <laughs> you're ever so productive, you go, am I manic right now? Dude, well, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. I was like editing five shows. I like made three specials. People are doing interventions. <gasps> I'm special. like, I'm like, if you think I am losing my mind on drugs, maybe you should try doing these drugs. You go, honestly, you guys sound jealous. I know. <laughs> like, giving I don't jealous. Know Natalia. You're jealous. Sorry, I'm Got booked it. and busy <laughs> while looking like this. <laughs> and you can't book one gig. That's crazy. Maybe you should take whatever you think I'm on. <laughs> At California weed, I have a hot take. I do think weed should not be legal in California. We made a mistake. Mm -hmm. We had it. We tried it. Mm -hmm. We tried it. Mm -hmm. So the homeless people have roller skates and machetes. Unhoused. Uh, to, uh, the, uh, you know what? No. <laughs> No, I reject it. I reject this. Unhoused. Unhoused? <laughs> like, who is that for? Am I, so that I don't offend the meth heads that would stab me in the spleen without thinking twice? What, who's this for? We need to be more respectful of the guy that shit on my <laughs> car. Are you sure? Like, Ellie? Is wild. The unhoused. By the way, this is America. No one can afford a house. <laughs> this Every, is America. <laughs> we're all unhoused. I'm voting for you for president. This I'm is voting America. For you. <laughs> this is America. I have an apartment and I want a house. Tell me the difference between homeless and unhoused. Oh, God. Homeless. Unhoused. Unhoused is also hard out of the mouth. Unhoused. Unhoused. I just like uh, unlocked my jaw. That's where we differ. <laughs> I can say it. I just don't think I should have to. <laughs> Jules, I, my mouth is very flexible. But I do like it. I do like you're like, I don't say the N word because it's like hard to say. Um, that's well, not the too, reason. One too many syllables. <laughs> like when there is something to change it to, that's not the reason to boycott. Like, you know what I mean? Don't make my mouth work. Transgender. That's nah, just not. I prefer tranny. Doesn't roll off yeah, the tongue. Yeah, <laughs> I like the way your priorities are. Nah, God didn't want us to say it that way. That's why he designed our mouths like this. <laughs> like, uh, I hate that shit. I'm sorry. Don't, no, don't. Where did, why did we get here? Okay, right. Um, <laughs> so your marriage. Okay, so <laughs> can I ask you a question? Yes. How do you do it? How also, did you I do have to say, I am still fresh. Like I was only, I've only been married two years. We got engaged after six months. Okay. COVID Love. years. So Can I ask like you when he seven. proposed, did you write when he did it? Did your brain think about doing a bit or a joke? Oh, good question. He kind of did a bit in our proposal. What was it? So when we first were dating, he would. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> what? Actually the whole time I was like, is this a fucking bit? I actually would send him like just engagement rings as a bit like as That's a joke because i was like i kind of just want a little one and then i was like i want an emrata one with two diamonds and he's but like, had you already talked about getting engaged we did that jokey thing where he's like i'm gonna marry you one day and i'm like yeah well get me this ring and then it just the bit kept going yeah that's why i think like don't be afraid like if he's scared in the beginning of that like it's i don't give a fuck I and love this. He was the one though that's like I was ready to play games because I'm like he's a comic. He's clearly gonna sure. break my heart or be crazy, and he immediately was like, "Oh, um, if you want to play games, that's fine." Like I'm just kind of tired and I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. And I literally was like, "I'm so sorry." Like I that's hot. Yeah, that yeah. Was really. Well, hot. he has a thyroid condition. How yeah, he doesn't have a lot of time left. Yeah, yeah, correct. So he's just straight up, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is hot." And then he would send me videos because I was filming a sh TV show of him singing funny songs based on like the fights I was having in the house. So he would like make up a funny song <laughs> and it just to try to make me stop crying. He okay. really fell in love with me during the darkest moment of me like being locked in a house filming reality is TV this show. summer house this is summer house. Okay. So you're like, you're not okay. Uh -huh. You're like filming all day. Yeah. You're, you're, everyone's playing tricks on you. You're not sure what's going on. You think everyone's trying to like take you down. So I was in like, talk about, loving you at your worst like sure. i cried a lot on the uh -huh. phone with him <laughs> and i'm actually like not even a crier yeah so it is crazy that he kind of saw me in this like s real psychotic break what makes you cry um ooh, what makes me cry when i feel really out of control okay and i think that was reality tv where i was like i feel the pieces moving in sure, weird sure. places and i and i don't know what's going on and i'm scared mm -hmm. um and i also think like when you're a sports person like like there's, a, I have a little bit of an obsession with like fairness. 
oh my God, that's my problem. I'm all about justice. And when I feel like justice is not correct, mm -hmm. I... I don't know how to handle it when I feel mm -hmm. like people are wronged or if I'm wronged yeah. and then I overreact. Yeah. I'm I'm or like when people do mean things to me that I wouldn't do to them. Yeah, yeah. So I was in a very When people don't play fair. Yes. You're cheating. Actually tennis like when someone would cheat me I would have a full mental breakdown, sure. sobbing, lose focus. And my mom's like, just accept when they cheat. It's uh -huh. part of the game. And I'm like, be me the right way. But it's also, this. that's the one place it's supposed to be a meritocracy. Is sports. Do you know what I mean? To have rules. and so yeah. But I why would you a... work this hard and be this good and then cheat? Like, my thing with cheating is you, you'll you always know you cheated. So that's when I... I would rather come in second. Cheating is a huge thing in tennis. In juniors, how do you cheat in tennis? Well, in juniors, you watch nowadays, they actually have automated line calls, but there's normally a judge. But in juniors, they don't have judges on every court. We're calling our own lines. And we have scholarships on the line. We have money on the line. We have sponsorships. So people are just like out, out. And it's crazy. So I used to, there's a rule, like if they hook you, they call it mm -hmm. hooking, you can hook them right back. What's and then hooking? you're even. Hooking is when like I hit. The only way to get an abortion in <laughs> America? So sorry. <laughs> Honestly, that was really nice. well done. Thank you. Yeah, I really actually loved that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this cheating element of it, but I always. But felt what's hooking? Hooking means like I hit a serve. This is an educational podcast. I hit a serve. It's a sports podcast. I hit a serve. It was an ace. I won the point. Okay. And you go. That ball was out. So you literally take the point from me. So then I would wait until it was an important point, and I do it right back to you. Yeah. But this is mental warfare. It, and I, when I was younger, I used to do it more. And then I realized like, just don't. And I had this like karma idea in my head. I was always like, if you don't cheat, like in the long run, it'll work out. And, and the world is fair. Yeah. And I realized the world isn't fair, no. but you can choose how you react to the world yep. is kind of where I got to and how like being mad at people and angry is literally just hurting yourself. Yeah. And having an older, wiser man help me with that. Like he's sober. He's been through a lot of therapy. So I really like, I like respected his mind. You need to be love with someone it. to respect their mind. Yes. I love that. I love all that I'm hearing because I realize that like what I need to be with someone is to respect them. And if I see someone who's not in control of themselves or their reactions, I lose respect and then I can't have sex with them anymore. I That makes complete and sense. And I need someone that's like I'm in awe of. Yes. And I also used to... Be, be with guys just for like looks I was very into just being with hot guys because huh. I didn't respect them uh -huh. so then they couldn't hurt me so I so I would or I'd be with really emotionally unavailable men yeah because I'm like they're not even available Love but really it. I wasn't available yeah so then I I kind of had this thing because I was protecting myself and I'm competitive so I had a lot of pride I was like you're never fucking hurt me like no yeah, one would yeah, ever yeah, break yeah, up yeah. with yeah. me and I I would just always be on top. And it's like, love is not a game. Yeah. And he was the first one that was like, we're not playing a game. I just, I like spending time with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, let's get to know each other. So that was like hot. Yeah. Um, The hardest thing about dating an older man who's smart is like, he's experienced something. So he'll tell me like, you shouldn't do this. And I'm like, I need to make those mistakes on my own. I love that. So that's our biggest, like, he'll be like, I told you so. And I'm like, don't fucking say that. Yeah. Cause like now I get it. Yep. And I, you also know, I don't like, being told what to do so I'm yeah. like let me live my crazy life totally and learn and I'm I love that you're here for me but I can't like listen to the rules of yeah it all. yeah you have to make the mistake or it, there's no such thing as mistakes um unless, you have unless you're me in the pandemic um <laughs> you have your respect of someone's mind is huge huge so yeah when he proposed he obviously stopped sending me cute cute videos because he stopped trying as hard but like <laughs> six months in I wake up and he's like singing in the other room and he's I was making one of these videos and he texted it to me and I opened it up and at the end he was like by the bed and just like gave me the ring and the bed is my favorite place like that's where I did always imagine getting proposed to that's called clinical depression I had my Invisalign in, <laughs> I just crusty <laughs> eyes you're just like the grandpa from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory <laughs> that's all I, want. <laughs> like, I was like ah! <laughs> and I remember crying one because I wanted to cry because I thought that's what you're supposed to do and two but I feel like when I try I can't I know I started crying for a deeper meaning which was this is something I tried the least at yeah and I was like I called my mom and I was like I tried the least that my whole life I'm trying so hard mm -hmm. to accomplish things and with him I didn't try mm. I actually arguably fucked up a lot like yeah. I was really like 
not my best self a lot of it yeah and I go and it still happened and it like spun how I thought of the world because I thought you had to be so fucking diligent and so fucking right to get any kind of wins and things have to be hard in order to be good yes and that's what I learned that's what I thought with tennis like I had to torture myself Uh so I cried over the fact that oh something cool happened that I didn't plan like I didn't trick them I didn't have like a long like I actually didn't see it coming and then but also I was a little stoic with it where like it didn't make my life like I it, it wasn't it was very like this is cool and now let's continue living. It was not like filling the God size hole. God, no. I feel like you didn't I didn't meet him till I realized like men are actually like really distracting and they hurt my mental health and I really don't want to get involved with one if he's going to like put a toll on me and mm-hmm. annoy me and distract me from my goals. But when it's easy and healthy, it's just like, you're then my, you're my it. teammate. Yes. And let's just continue. I got, I had to have a couple really bad ones to be like, Oh, it's actually like, I'd rather be single a bazillion times over than be with the wrong. But when person. you're ready to be single on your own, that's when you're like a complete person and can attract a complete person. Yeah. You know, and he also his mom had passed away and I think he was in a new mindset too. Sure. Where I think before that he like had a really close relationship with her and like she was sick and all this stuff. So yeah. I think he was in a time of his life where he felt like he had space for love. Yeah. It's like a weird timing thing. Sure, of course. But I also feel like like anything if if you hold it too tight, it'll leave you. Whatever you chase, you chase away. And, Andy Letterman was actually joking about that with money to me and we were like being money manifestation she was trying to tell me that's why she bought all her purses and I was like okay but I I actually it makes sense we're like tennis I wanted to win so bad I would lose okay say it again okay so Annie (laughs) believes that buying Louis Vuitton purses (laughs) will make more money be in her bank account she said basically if you're holding on to the money too tight that the money's not going to flow the this right way. This isn't true. And the more you spend, the more you make. And I was like, I'm cheap. I'm a cheap person. And I will get stressed out when yeah. I feel like I'm getting ripped off yes. and stuff. I believe in investing and like whatever. And she was telling me this and I was like, I've never heard something like this before. No, Annie. Okay. I like <laughs> Yes and no. She so- was a little high. <laughs> like not off her rocker, but I. Th- she was a tiny bit high. <laughs> if someone is wearing a Louis Vuitton purse... Around at all times, there's, <laughs> the- dr- there's drugs in it. Uh, okay, <laughs> it looked so fucking good. Yeah, I'm like, I think she was convincing herself the purchase was worth it. No, I think that. Yeah, I know. I'm like <laughs> sometimes when someone's explaining their philosophy on life to me like that, I'm like, are you trying to convince me or yourself? Because I'm, you're never gonna sell me on this. But like, but it is a mindset. It's like when you're getting a job. If yeah, you want the job so bad, they can sense it off you. Where sure. If you're kind of like, if you want me here, great. If not, like I have other opportunities. I wouldn't hire that person, but. I, 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 yes and no. Okay. Agree. I think that when you come in and you're like, you have a needy and en- desperate energy, mm-hmm. that's like bad news. But I think it's important to be like, I really want to work here. Yeah. I really want this job. Yeah. I'm not going to want it so badly that I can't even have a conversation and be myself. And I think that's the relationship. But when you someone want. comes in and is like too cool for school yeah. and they're like, I could take it or leave that's it. That's like I'm dating like, a fuck boy. Yeah. I'm like, this bitch is going to ask to work from home. <laughs> this bitch is like, Gonna be like, can I leave early for my improv class? Like, I'm like, like, if this relation, if I got divorced, like, that would be fucking horrible. Yeah. But I'm gonna be okay. But I also have to watch myself because people that, like, could care less about me, I'm like, daddy, daddy, daddy. So when someone's too nonchalant, I have to check my conditioning because I'm just, like, magnetically attracted to that person. And when someone's like, I want to be here and I like you and I want to be with you, I'm like, bleh. So, like, I have that emotional dyslexia. Mm-hmm. I do think with money, I'm with you. Like, you have to have faith in yourself. Mm-hmm. But I also, you know, like, the first year that I made money, I thought when you had $100, you had $100. Yeah. When if you have $100, you get to keep, like, 60 20. of it. Let's say, yeah, exactly, California. So 20 cents. New York. And so I couldn't afford my taxes that year. And I, like, went broke the year that I made money. Oh, I had a full panic attack, uh, like, 60 days ago over it. I'm also big know. on going, like, like, don't spend money on literally anything. Buy everything yeah. on eBay, everything on Etsy. I yeah. don't buy oh. anything new. And it's also like you start think when you have too much stuff, it actually gives me anxiety because mm-hmm. you just feel weighed down by it. But it's funny what you said with the like the guys who hate you versus the guys who are obsessed with you. I actually had that pendulum 
where I'd be with the guy who didn't care if I got hit by a car. Mm -hmm. And it would be, I was like, he doesn't even like being around me. Why is he telling me he loves me? Like, and he would just not, these guys, they just didn't appreciate, like they're narcissists, right? But they say, I love you, yeah. but you don't feel but it. But you feel horrible around them. This is my thing about, I just had this conversation. Tell me if this is nuts. I think the way we say I love you is backwards. I think, because when someone says like, I love you, if you don't feel loved, mm -hmm. it's just a weird lie. Yeah, and it's it's like he loved what I was on paper for him. Sure, he was like, oh yeah, I like that she did this. She went to this school. She played sports. She's she's funny. But I'm like, but we're not in love. But like, like yeah, like checks all the boxes, but like not like no so connected. You feel like you're sabotaging it because you're like, I don't feel that, and he's giving me love. Yeah, but love is a action. But it's also totally. But it's also like the love you're giving. I'm not able to feel for whatever reason. Yeah, insert, like maybe you're just missing each other. Like insert an annoying love language attachment. It's style just like you know when you here. feel empty or with someone mm -hmm. was what I'd feel. And then I'd go to the opposite spectrum and be with a guy that like I could be like, can you do my laundry? And he would do it. And I, he would just he would never leave me. He would like lick my pussy all day if I wanted. Like, but you don't respect him. Mm -hmm. And then I would go back to the narcissist who didn't respect me. Mm -hmm. And Des was this first guy that I had this kind of balance with, which we're, we're very like, maybe some days I have more of a crush on him and some mm -hmm. days he's more of a crush on me. Like it's pretty balanced. Some Cute. girls love being with a guy who like loves them more. Like I still need a little chase. Like I'm, I have daddy issues. I like that you know that about yourself. Yeah. He's a Scorpio. Like he's tough. Yeah. And I, and I like that. But you, <laughs> what are you, you're chasing your husband around no, your studio in, apartment? Well, I mean, yeah, we can't go anywhere. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like. As in, I don't have this, like, I don't have this guy who's like, he respects himself around like me. Like it, okay. And I like he that. dignity. Yeah. Dignity, yeah. this we, thing called there dignity. There is a, like, balance, and I think it's, like, good to know that, like, it's possible to find that. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be. But I do think to recover from a narcissist, you go to a guy who's like so not. Yeah. And then you keep flipping back and forth and it's sure. like your head's banging against the wall and it's not even hot. Only way I can come. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I do think like this is my new theory because like this guy that I'm seeing, we're like, like it's always like, when is the I love you thing going to happen? Mm. And my thing is like, I'll let you know when you love me. Like, I'll let you know when I feel loved. You don't mm. have to worry about saying it. Yeah, I mean, and guys same, say it by accident all the time. And by the way, uh, dude, when I'm, they're fucking you, they're just like, oh, oh, oh. yeah, that, that, that has never happened to me, not <laughs> once. <laughs> Wait, maybe there's something to your jewelry choices. How, what do you mean? Guys say that during sex? I think it happens sometimes in the moment or like. Not one time. <laughs> what? I get like, I, slut. <laughs> Like what? Maybe because I'm the one that's like, don't push me around. I'm just a, like, I just am a princess. And they're like, I love you. Dude. Is that okay? <laughs> Can I please fuck you? And I'm like, I don't want to do anal. And they're like, I love you. <laughs> I'm like, I just can't. But wait, do you feel like when you get married? Because it, it does. It's such a stereotype. But do you feel like when you get married, sex gets weirder? I think there's something about it getting hotter. Oh, it's hot. I think so too. There's a calmness to it. The day after we got married, there's just a calmness of like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, we chose each other and now we just get to like. Is that how you have sex? So, what, You're just like, I like it. Like, this wait, like I. <laughs> why are you like Tina at the wedding? Just like, like in the corner, just like, like who invite? Did anyone invite her? We don't know. I think she works here. We don't know her. I do feel like I'm in a BDSM outfit now. But I, <laughs> I do feel like the our marriage, it was pretty calm. And I actually, he wanted to do anal. And I told him. After you got married? I told him not till we're married. Because I had to get him, we had to play some games. I was yeah, bored. sure, sure, sure. And then our wedding Sneaky. night. Sneaky. I was like, do you want to do anal? He's like, I'm not doing it on our on wedding night. On your wedding night? Well, because I knew he'd say no. And then I was like, you just rejected me. So now whenever he asks, I'm like, why don't you just reject me again? So I'm just playing a long game of like trying not to do <laughs> anal with my husband. <laughs> Wait, hold on. On your wedding night, you sprung that on I him? was, like, joking about it. And then he obviously was like, I'm not trying anal at, like, 2 a.m. when you're drunk. <laughs> yeah, and, like, like, just ate cake for four like, hours. I'm pretty sure your dad's, like, next door. <laughs> no, I can hear your parents yeah, yeah. in the other room. <laughs> so he said no. And now I'm like, oh, so I'm just a little poop whore to you? Like, you don't even want this? Poop whore? I just, I don't know where that came from. 
don't know where that came from. But I felt like a dirty little poop whore that he was like, no, I don't want to do anal with you. Like when a guy says no when you've offered it, it's like, we're done here. I like that, by the way, you and I both look <laughs> into the camera. We're not even talking to we each other. We have not made eye contact this entire show. We, we just like love attention. To be like, this is where we differ. Anyway, like we're both doing our go, own show. With that said... <laughs> You're now the host of the Good For You Vine. Do you need me to should I even be here? I've never had a guest just talk straight to the camera most of the interview. Dating is crazy. <laughs> Dating? <laughs> oh, I'm still gonna get this off my chest. <laughs> Oh, my. This is just a solo podcast at this point. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> Wait, can you move your chair a little? (laughs) You're literally like in my shot. (laughs) I'm wheezing. Oh my god, I'm wheezing. Yeah, I'm a Leo. Uh, That actually (laughs) (laughs) makes sense. (laughs) I well, you know, my thing on astrology is I don't think it's like the stars and stuff, but I do think the proximity of your birthday to other holidays or lack thereof forms your personality. Yeah. Leo's always were like, it's the summer. You didn't get to have a birthday party with people and you had to like figure out a way to get attention. In yeah. August. And you're like sunshine. And you had to yes. like entertain yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, it's, I would love to be cool enough to be like, I don't believe in astrology, but I do. Yeah. And I don't know how it works. I'm into, I want, I, enjoy I enjoy it I enjoy it it's a very and fun you can, hobby you can use it at the bars if like yeah. a guy comes up to you he's not into you just be like what's your sign and he'll be like Virgo and you go we're not compatible and he'll be upset for multiple reasons why are One you that compatible you, with Virgos oh I'm not why not um because it's actually close to Leo mm-hmm. if you're touching apparently it's not good yeah and just I've had multiple Virgos in my life and it didn't work out so I blamed the stars sure as a Virgo, um, oh, no. I get Women, why. I'm good. Women, I'm great with. Yeah. Men, Virgos, I don't. I don't think I've ever met a man Like, I Virgo. like a woman cancer, don't like a, I know. I don't think men are born in September. Virgo men are gay. Gay. Well, we're, yeah. Because as a gay man, shit. I <laughs> you identify as a agree gay man. <laughs> because September was back to school. So my birthday, September 4th, well, that was weird. First day of school. So I got like for my birthday, I got like a protractor and like pencils and a A protractor. Do you know what I'm saying? I use it for sex. So, (laughs) so like it was all about just like academia, like, you know what I mean? My my Mm -hmm. birthday was the first day of school Mm -hmm. on like a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was no like celebrating. Yeah. Whereas you were just like at like I was like Lake it's the best part- August. I was August like, what? The party's here, August 12th. There is something about like, like, it's so cute when humans try to connect because I think we spend so much time being like, oh, you root for this team? You're dead to me. Oh, you voted for this person? You're trash. Like, tell me, this is what humans do with their birthdays, though. Like, what's your birthday? You're just, like, talking to a stranger. What's your birthday? August 12th. August 29th. <laughs> a day! No! We both were born on no! a day! <laughs> like, not even that close. I'll make anything make sense. Why I'll... did we, like, What? Like not even. We did that over text. I was like, I am a Virgo moon, so I understand you. I understand you. Yeah, yeah. You work hard. What else won't you do in bed? I'm entertained by this. Oh, um, I don't like spitting. I do not like choking. Like it's hard enough to come. I'm not gonna come while I'm fighting for my life. Sure. And then, but so, but but, hold on, hold on. But are you? (laughs) And I'm getting choked by my necklace right now. I was gonna say the fact that you just tried to. Comfort, like something that's choking you one thing, choking and giving you tetanus, you'll pay for it. <laughs> um, but are guys doing it so much that you can't breathe? I joke that it's hard for the men to, because like if they do too hard, you're scared. Sure. And if they do too soft, you're like, pussy as bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like it's, it's, you're it's, like making me act. I just, I don't need to be scared like scared to suffocate i apparently it's science that like you can have a better orgasm while you're suffocating well, yeah lack of i just oxygen. like it's the thing where like i am on so many like i scare myself through like competition try and be the best person i could be i just want it to be like relaxing and like peaceful and like it's probably from my past but like i just i don't want any drama yeah in the yeah. bedroom sure and like if my lower back's hurting a little we're have you tried like positions. a little arm bar like a I'm also strong. Like, I'm physically strong. By the strong. way, I think I agree. Like, that's why I'm, I don't like spitting. Mm-hmm. I don't like choking. I don't want slapping. I don't want hair pulling. 
Uh. I don't want you turning into a different person, having like a different voice or being like baby or being like, just be the guy that I like was with 10 minutes ago who now like wants to connect with me in a physical way. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually pretty kinky. Just like missionary. And I, I'll peaceful. do lights on. I like lights on. What? I'll do lights on. I'm like, let's fucking let's sh- little. Are you? Let me guess. No music. <laughs> no. <laughs> this you know is, is psychopathic. It's like, it's, I like like sober. Like my life, it's like I want to feel it all and I don't need the extra bit. It's like slapping is like cocaine. Like I don't need the extra stuff. I just want the rawness. Because it makes your nose bleed? I don't want condoms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want raw, simple, and like authentic. And if I cry, I cry. I couldn't. Do you think I'm a freak? No, I just, I'm trying to reconcile how different we are and how much I like you. Oh my God. Do you know what I'm you're saying? Make, no, you're gonna make me cry. I love meeting someone that we're almost different in every one of our preferences, mm-hmm. but I like you more. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, cause ma- we're both bored with ourselves. So when you find someone- Wait, I, I'm what? I'm bored with myself. Okay. So it's interesting. Don't project, I'm <laughs> fascinated. I am on the edge of my seat every day with what I'm gonna do next. You're like, I have whiplash oh, from just waking up. I am up. <laughs> riveted by myself. But it's fun to talk to someone with a different perspective and not be like- That's correct. Yeah. Well, no, I think so many people- <laughs> Or only, it makes for a good podcast. Yeah, they surround, yeah, no, good, you're, this is this is money in the bank. That's why I like you. And not like as a friend, I just mean like, this is gonna do numbers. <laughs> you're like, babe, this is analytics. I mean, yeah, sorry. The advertisers are gonna love it. We're never gonna speak again. <laughs> Okay. Lose my number. <laughs> we have good chemistry is what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. I feel like you came to play. You like fuck it. You got, Thanks, coach. <laughs> you got the show. Yeah. But also, if we had seen each other last night, we would have spent the whole time being like, save it. No, we would have told each other to shut up the whole yeah. time. I'm the worst, yeah. too. Don't blow it. And then you'll be like, we have to try that again and it yeah. wouldn't work. Don't talk. It was just, it was a nice to for you to even acknowledge that I was in town. Yes. I like you a lot. Thank you. I'm I like big you, fan. too. Um, burner phone. Hey, that's my pod with my husband. Named her podcast with her husband with her last name. Like a feminist should. I'm a dom. You have. I'm actually you? a freak, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but I say, don't spit on me. I'm a, don't spit on me. It is so dom to be like, I just lay here with no music in the daylight. You can't touch me. You can't choke me. You can't spit on me. You can't do anything. You can't laser me. <laughs> You're lucky to be here. Yeah. Just. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, it's because it. Well, I had another podcast that I didn't have time for guests, so then it t- turned into another one. So I was like, "You're coming into my pod." Sure. It's burner phone, and it's a funny pun. Sure, sure, sure. Funny I agree. Pun. No, it's good. I like it. Thank you. I love that you just did that. It's a funny pun. No, it's not that funny. It's. Like- I actually don't like puns. I think I hate. I puns. hate puns, but when they're good, they're great. Yeah, but I would never do a great pun. And other people like them. Yeah, and we don't yuck people's yums. Um, and yet, I, you've said that a couple times. I don't totally know what it means, but I like I it. I don't know what it means. God, I got to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this has to end. I like you too much. Um, uh, also, Giggly Squad, you already know. You're touring. Oh, yeah, I'm touring. Tannaburner.edu. <laughs> what are we on here? G-O-V. G-O dot gum. <laughs> yeah. yes. I end these very awkwardly. Anything else you'd like to say to the camera? Why are you looking at me all of a sudden? I'm thrown because you're looking at me. Yeah, I know, you're actually this uncomfortable. Is, by the way, this whole time, I keep taking my glasses off because I like can't believe what I'm seeing. Like, you're why, look back in your camera. I literally, who, what, who are you? I, <laughs> why are we at the I know, like, how did I get here? Like, what? No, yeah. Anyway, thank sorry, you for let, me. Me t- let me make eye contact with the true intimacy. Mm-hmm. I understand. Um, I end these awkwardly. Okay, bye. Don't ride elephants. I love you guys. Hannah Burner. We did it.